understood who he is after walking with him for two and a half years learning all about the kingdom of God seeing all the power demonstration have they truly understood who he is this is a very important question this is an important question not only they have to answer everyone on planet earth have to answer this important question and the answer to this question decides where you spend your eternity who do the people say i am they give answers now he is uh, posing the same question to them who do you say i am something wonderful happened verse 16 simon peter answered you are the messiah the son of the living god he had a different answer from the crowd see there were educated people in the crowd there were there were traditional people religious people in the crowd they did not know his true identity but peter a mere fisherman with not much secular education he gave a wonderful answer he said i know who you are you are the messiah the anointed one the christ in other words peter is saying lord you are the one to whom all the old testament is pointing to you are the one to which all the Old Testament was prophesying. You are the Messiah. And he added something more. The son of the living God. In other words. Peter is acknowledging. That the person standing. As a human being in front of him. Is really God in human flesh. Hidden to the public. But revealed to one of the disciples. I believe Peter was speaking for the rest of the disciples too. And Jesus appreciated the answer. Verse 17, Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not, mark those words, revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. Knowing the true identity of Jesus Christ is a revelation. That's what Jesus is saying. Revelation is a, it's a special term that we see in the New Testament. And Jesus is saying, my father revealed to you. It's not, not by flesh and blood. In other words, no human being has taught you this truth. This is a revelation from my father. To understand the true identity of Jesus, Father God has to open our inner eyes to see the truth. When we study the scriptures, the scriptures tell us the father reveals the son and the son reveals the father. What does John 1 18 tell us? John 1 18. No one has seen the Father, Bible says, but only one. The only begotten has seen the Father. Let me read for you verse 18. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son who is himself God and is in closer relationship with the Father has made him known. So the Father reveals the Son and the Son reveals the Father. That's what scripture teaches us. So getting back to our context here, Jesus is saying, you are blessed, Simon. So what's the true blessing? True blessing is not accumulation of wealth. True blessing is not getting a degree or post-graduation uh, degree. True blessing is knowing who 
Jesus really is. He is the Messiah, the son of the living God. God took on human form to come to earth that he could redeem sinful mankind. That's why he had to come as a human. He took on humanity. 100% God, 100% human. One person, two natures. That's the identity of Jesus. And then from verse 18, for the first time in the New Testament, we find the word church. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then, listen carefully, verse 20. He ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Why is that? When Peter proclaimed that he is the Messiah, the son of the living God, Jesus himself confirmed that that is a revelation. But in verse 20, he's telling them, don't tell anyone. In a short while, I'll tell you why Jesus said that. And from verse 21, I want you to watch this very carefully. Now we got the background. Jesus is taking them to Caesarea Philippi, asking them two questions, one of which was a personal one. Who do you say I am? And then the confession comes. They understand that he is God in human flesh. And then Jesus talks about the church and tells them, don't tell this truth to anyone. Then Jesus continues in verse 21. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. From on, after Peter confessed the revelation, Jesus started giving them more revelations. See, these truths, what Jesus is going to speak to them, he might have hinted at them before, but now very plainly, he's talking to them about his ministry. In a short while, he's going to suffer. He will be persecuted. Finally, he will be killed. He's going to be crucified. But that's not the end. On the third day, he would, raise, he would be raised from the dead. Listen to Peter's reaction. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Suddenly, the disciple who is called to follow Jesus becomes the leader. He started rebuking him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. What's going on? Jesus himself said publicly that Peter knows about his identity. His confession is truth. It was revealed to him by the Father. But... Peter does not have a revelation about the ministry of the Messiah. That's why Jesus said in verse 20, don't go around saying this. You know, the problem with the Jewish people was, and uh, we know that Peter was a Jew, they had a concept about Messiah. They were all waiting for the Messiah. Traditionally, they believed, they were taught by the rabbis, that when the Messiah comes, 
He is going to establish a literal physical kingdom then. So they were expecting that when the Messiah comes, they were actually under the rule of the Romans. They expected the Messiah to deliver them from the Romans and establish the kingdom of God at that time. Now as his disciples, they dreamt probably of becoming his assistants. See, this was the traditional Jewish mindset. So when Jesus is saying, I'm going to be crucified, Peter couldn't take that. Peter said, never Lord, that must not happen to you. Their expectation of the Messiah was very different. They had a different understanding. And Jesus had to rebuke Peter. See, it's the same case with us. We, have, we may have a few revelations from scripture. Uh, that doesn't mean we, have, we, we may know the whole truth. See? But if you are a student of the Bible, the Spirit of God will give you the whole picture of what is happening. That's why we, we have 27 books in the New Testament. Four Gospels, then a historical book, then the epistles, and then finally the prophetic book. We get a whole picture of God, what's going on. We need to study the scriptures to get a full understanding. Peter knew who Jesus was, but Peter did not know at that time what his future ministry was. And when Jesus was revealing further truths, he just could not adjust to the fact that Jesus is going to die by crucifixion. And Jesus had to rebuke him. This is the background. This is the context. Then in 24th verse, Jesus is telling his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. In other words, Jesus is telling Peter and the rest of the disciples, look here, I am going to Jerusalem to die on a cross. And if you plan to follow me as my disciples, if you are surrendered and committed to follow me, there is a cross for each one of you who are following me. It is not a cross for me alone. Everyone who follows me must have a cross. In other words, he's telling Peter, Peter, when I called you, you came after me. Probably you didn't think much at that time. I am giving you a chance to think it through thoroughly. There is a cost you have to pay. You listen to me and then you analyze the thing. Sit down and count the cost. Decide once more whether you want to come after me or not. This is not a very popular message, but this is a message that Jesus repeatedly said in the Gospels. Again, as I was speaking in the Malayalam uh, section, as I said, I am amazed how people are ignoring this message. This is a message that is taught again and again by Jesus. Repeatedly speaking, how conveniently we have missed the core of Jesus' teachings. It shows how shallow our faith is. So Jesus is calling through the gospel everyone to follow him. The word follow is a very important word. Probably repeated more than 20 times. If my memory serves me right, at least 23 times. The word follow means to put into practice all that Jesus taught and copy his lifestyle, 
his way of living that is christianity this is the calling of the gospel every one of us here if you are born again you are called to a life of being a disciple of jesus and if you are not born again through the gospel jesus wants to communicate to you that the calling is for disciple that is our calling to follow jesus christ jesus came down as a human being so that he will set us an example for us to follow he was not sitting in an office and telling us to you know do such and such thing and just giving us commandments no before he gives all the commandments he showed by his life how to obey those commandments follow jesus but jesus is saying if you decide to follow me there is a cost involved what's he saying whoever wants to be my disciple note the word must that is a commandment there is no option either you follow him as a disciple take up the cross deny yourself take up the cross or you are not following the jesus of the bible straightforward language and uh, i'll tell you many so called christians are not really following the jesus of the bible the real jesus bible says there is another jesus there is another gospel there is another spirit all that we see are not the holy spirit all that we hear is not the true gospel all who present christ are not presenting the true jesus there is another jesus and many people are following that jesus and that jesus the another jesus does not require us to carry a cross Jesus is saying whoever wants to be my disciple listen to the cost must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me so when a person decides to follow Jesus Christ the cost involved is denying themselves and taking up the cross let me ask you a question what does it mean to carry your cross can somebody answer me because jesus is requiring us to take up our cross and follow him what does it mean to take up the cross and follow christ all of you are so silent when i pose this question to different people in uh, most cases people say oh that means suffering good answer but not the right answer they say persecutions and suffering and pain and all partially it's all true to understand the word cross imagine jesus original audience when jesus spoke about carrying the cross or taking up the cross what is the picture that comes into the mind of the disciple or as a secondary audience in the mind of the crowd who are hearing this for them it's very easy to identify in my study i found out death by crucifixion was the capital punishment given to criminals 
This was done by the Roman government. And during the time of Jesus itself, there were more than 30,000 crucifixions. History testifies to this. So every day it's a normal sight to see crucifixion. People who are going to be crucified, they will be carrying their own uh, crosses. And as they move along on the wayside, there will be two lines of people on either side spitting at them, abusing them, accusing them. Everyone understood that these people who are carrying this instrument are not going to come back. They are going to their final destiny. So when Jesus says, anyone who is coming after me as a disciple must carry his cross, the original hearers, the original audience had no problem in understanding that language. To them, immediately what comes to their mind is the picture of a criminal carrying a cross. A person going to die. For them, the cross is not just suffering, it speaks about death. So what is Jesus saying? Jesus is calling us through the gospel to die. Have you heard this gospel? After preaching this gospel, do you think anyone is going to answer the altar call? Oh, they will answer when you say, Jesus is going to heal all your diseases. He is going to uh, promote you in your job. If you are in debt, he is going to uh, clean off all that. I have no doubt that Jesus can do all that. But the core message is, he is calling us to be a disciple. And there is a cost involved which preachers and teachers and prophets have hidden from the people. And the cost is he's calling us to die. That is true Christianity. Jesus is saying, I'm going to Jerusalem. Those who are coming after me, they have to take a cross. I'm going to be on the cross. I will be crucified. Those who want to follow me, there is no escape path. You go the Jerusalem way. You go the way of the cross. And when he rebukes Peter for trying to take away the cross, he says, Satan, get behind me. A gospel that hides the cross is satanic. A gospel that offers eternal life without the cross it's not true gospel. It is another gospel. Jesus is calling us to die. Now let me explain what that death is. Come to Luke chapter 9 for the parallel passage. Parallel passage. Luke chapter 9 and verse 23, there is a wonderful word that is inserted by Luke. None of the other gospel writers have that particular word. 9.23 says, Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily. In other words, die daily immediately we understand that is not talking about physical death no one can die physically every day you die once it's appointed unto man to die once and then there is judgment we all die physically once but this calling to become a disciple or to a disciple in following him, the cost is dying daily. So it's not talking about physical death. Then what is the death? Or what type of death is Jesus requiring? 
Very easy to find out. Jesus is going to Jerusalem to die physically. And we who follow him as disciples are called to die not physically on a cross, but the principle of that physical death on the cross by Jesus has to be taken and applied to the life of his disciples. What I mean is, come to Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross. Daily dying is denying yourself. That is death. I have desires, ambitions of my own. But when those ambitions meet with the requirement of Jesus and God's desire for my life, my desires die. I no more pursue my ambition. If anyone wants to follow in the path that Jesus is giving us, Jesus is the leader. He is going before us and we are following his footsteps. Then we have uh, to sacrifice our desires to go elsewhere, our ambitions to become someone. We crucify it all. We die to our ambitions. We die daily. Many preachers say, God is going to give you the desires of your heart. Jesus is saying, come after me and die to your desires. A disciple of Jesus has no ambition of his own. No desires. In fact, his only ambition will be to please his master who is walking before him. That's the ambition that Paul had. If you come to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 9. Look at what Paul is saying. So we make it our goal to please him. In some translations, ambition to please him. Paul did not have any desire of his own. He had only one. And that was to please his master, Jesus. Let me now ask you a question. Have you decided to follow Jesus? Oh yeah, we sang a song. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. But before singing that song, have you counted the cost? See, when you go to Luke chapter 14... Luke chapter 14 and verse 28. Verse 26 onwards, he's talking about discipleship. And in verse 28, Jesus says, Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you. He's talking about discipleship. Jesus is saying, don't take an, a decision immediately. Sit down, count the cost. Can you pay this cost? I am demanding your whole life. It is either we give ourselves totally to Jesus or we give nothing. Following Jesus all the way. So Jesus is telling Peter, Peter, your first revelation was right. But the second thing of, of getting the cross out of the way, that's satanic. Peter, decide again. You may not have understood this before. If you are my follower, my disciple, I require that you deny yourself and take up your cross. I am going to be Crucified on a physical, literal cross. Peter, the principle applies to you. 
deny yourself when we understand the counsel of god for our life and if it is in opposition to our desire and ambition that is the cross god's desire my desire clash and i die daily to my desires we all have ambitions we all have desires but the one who follows jesus as a disciple die daily our prayer is always lord your will be done in my life in verse 20 he tells peter and the rest of the people it's not time for you to go and tell this truth now because they will be telling a truth a partial truth that jesus is the messiah but they have not yet known the demand of the gospel namely following jesus by carrying the cross so the cross is not simply sufferings but suffering is involved the cross speaks about death now listen to me carefully i told you it is not talking about physical death but in denying yourself you can meet with physical death suppose the lord is asking me or asking you to go to some of the most violent places on earth from the comforts of australia you deny yourself and you move to that place you can get killed there are so many martyrs so many people uh, getting killed all around the world see it can cost you your physical life but primarily it is talking about denying yourself amen are you following jesus as a disciple if you are the cost is deny yourself take up your cross and follow christ what a joy to take up the cross i don't want to do anything by myself i i don't want to do my desires i don't want to follow my ambition it's a joy to take up the cross to deny myself and follow jesus christ look at verse 25 now matthew chapter 16 25 for whoever wants to save their life will lose it what's the meaning of that in the context no 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 i don't want to take the cross and deny myself i like the comforts of life jesus must uh, might have some other ambition about me but that's okay i want to save my life bible says you will lose it meaning eternally losing it see that for whoever wants to save their life will lose it but whoever loses their life for me will find it which is that person when he realized the lord's desire about his personal life he denies himself loses himself for his sake he will find it meaning eternally find it no wonder people are not preaching this gospel because this gospel if you preach this gospel no one is going to clap hands no one is going to have a spontaneous worship as we call what is actually true worship true worship is carrying the cross and following jesus our life is worship singing songs is just an external expression of our walk with god see the gospel 
and throughout the gospels jesus has given this model let me take you to john chapter 12 you see many people after hearing this gospel left jesus i request you to study the gospels where jesus spoke his messages you see we have a wrong understanding of the messages of jesus we think it is so seeker friendly it is not in fact many times when he spoke people left you start speaking about the cross and about self denial your church meant the you will you know you know cut down on the extra <laughs> fittings and gadgets and fat in many places for example i'll come to john 12 in john chapter 6 after the people came on the second day after enjoying the miracle of the multiplication of bread jesus spoke a sermon i am the true bread eat me drink my blood he was asking them to come into a covenant relationship with him all of the thousands of people just left him they said we are not come to see you, to hear all this miracles yes we enjoy to that's fine we are not come here to come into a covenant relationship with you all of them left and you know what was jesus reaction <laughs> jesus told the 12 people why are you looking at me you can also go which pastor will say that suddenly from your church everybody leaves a true malayali pastor will go and say please don't leave now <laughs> But look at Jesus. Jesus said, "You cannot leave." What he was trying to communicate was, "These are kingdom principles, and this is not going to be diluted." It is at that point that Peter said, "Where will we go? You have words of eternal life." This is another portion in John chapter 12 he is speaking about the cross this needs much ex explanation but i will uh, summarize it in verse 20 12 and verse 20 there are some greeks who have come to see jesus greeks are gentile people they want to have an audience with jesus they want to talk seriously with him So Philip and Andrew they bring these people to Jesus and uh, tell him Lord these people want to talk to you. Jesus instead of replying directly to their request he starts speaking about the cross that he is going to be crucified. And then in uh, verse 24 very truly I tell you unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies it remains only a single seed but if it dies it produces many seeds he was talking about his crucifixion he is the kernel of wheat the kernel that came down from heaven was sowed on the earth the kernel of wheat died and through death life came all those who believe in the sacrificial death of jesus will become children of god and there will be a mighty harvest so he was talking about his own death then that is verse 24 in verse 25 he applies the principle of the crucifixion that is life through death to his disciples remember gentiles wanted to come to talk to him before talking to them he is giving them a sermon about crucifixion and after he spoke john the writer is silent about the greeks they just left no one wants to hear about the cross how does jesus apply the principle of the kernel and death verse 25 anyone who loves their life will lose it while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for 
eternal life. These are exactly the words that we read in Matthew 16, 25. This is another occasion. Jesus is saying the same thing. And then in verse 26, Whoever serves me must follow me. I am going to the cross to die. The kernel of wheat is going to die. And death brings life. That principle he is applying to his disciples and saying, In this world, you can either deny yourself or live your life. If you live your life here in the now, you will lose it for eternity. If you deny yourself here for kingdom living, if you die here daily, if you take up your cross here, if the kernel of wheat dies, you will keep your life for eternal life. Repeatedly, Jesus was talking about this, carrying the cross. I'm going to conclude. Jesus is calling us to follow him. That is his message. Follow me. In other words, copy his lifestyle. Learn from him and apply it to your life. But following involves cost. Are you willing to pay the cost of self-denial and carrying the cross and following Christ? Maybe you might not have heard this truth before. But you have heard it now. How many of you make a commitment? My life on earth will be lived only for the glory of Jesus. If the Lord wants me to change my career, I'm going to do it. If the Lord wants me to do certain thing, I will do it. Even if I offend a million people, I'm going to do that. Let me show you as uh, uh, our brothers are coming to sing Luke chapter 14. Again, this needs a lot of explanation. But let me just read to you from verse 26. If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. It is not papa and mommy, number one. No. It is not papa's and mommy's desire. No. When you understand the desire of Jesus, all the rest goes. It is not wife first or husband first. It is Christ first. See? And Jesus is putting it point blank. You cannot be my disciple. Strong statements. We all want, want to go to heaven, but there is cost involved. Yes, salvation is by grace, but we are saved for works. We are not saved by works, we are saved by grace for works. And proper demonstration of works in a person's life is the fruit of salvation that he has truly been saved. God bless you guys with these messages. Think about what I said. Ponder on it. Ask the Lord. And if you have not committed, committed your life to be a disciple and to... And to carry the cross this morning Jesus is inviting you we cannot do it in our human strength we need the power of the Holy Spirit Jesus is inviting us anyone wants to desire to come after me to be my follower to be my disciple deny yourself take up your cross follow me such persons are guaranteed something John chapter 12 and verse 26 
he who serves me will follow me and then you know what jesus said jesus is saying he will be where i am and the second portion my father will honor him those are the people who carried the cross and followed christ not for any material things not to fulfill any self ambition but to fulfill the desires of jesus on this one life that he has given us on earth god bless you may the lord increase you and use you all for his glory